One of the benefits of flying at a club is having experienced pilots like Mike here to take a look at things before I button it up just to make sure we didn't forget anything. And Mike found a loose aileron linkage that needed to be fixed before we put it together. And while we were checking things, I even remembered to put the gear down so it would be ready when we wanted to turn this thing over. My Zero only weighs 20 pounds all up, but it's awkward to turn over by yourself without breaking something. All that remained before the maiden flight was to gas it up and fire the motor up. The biggest bit of drama came on the first takeoff when the plane hung a left when one of the wheels tightened up. But I had enough speed and the tail was flying already so I just lifted it off. And right here I was proud of myself for thinking of putting the DA-50 in this plane. The biggest trim changes I had to make was to the elevator because this thing wanted to balloon bad at speed. But with a bunch of down trim added, it flew pretty well at speed. I also had to make a small change to the aileron trims. Every once in a while we got some pretty gusty winds and the Zero does rock around a little bit, but you don't have to fight it much, it stays pretty much on line. I was still tweaking the ailerons a little bit here also. When I set up the ailerons, I dialed in all of the throw I could get. But it still flies like a warbird. It's got a decent roll rate and it's very predictable, but it's not quick. Here I put the gear down and went to full flaps just to see how the Zero handled. The wind was bumping it around a little bit. That's not bad. The biggest thing is how slow this thing got going. And that scared me a little bit, so I got on the gas and put the flaps back up. I'd find out later that going to half flaps, which I had set at right around 30 to 32 degrees, worked best for this plane. And this is the first landing. The flaps are at around 30 degrees, but I found out that the elevator is more sensitive than I expected at those speeds. And between the wheels being too tight and the grass being that long, it nosed over and touched the prop down, but it didn't break anything. This is the second flight. I had loosened the wheels up just a little bit and put some more rudder into it, and takeoff was a lot more predictable. The DA-50 with a Vest 23B prop pulls this plane around just fine. A little extra power can go a long way to keeping an airplane alive sometimes. One of the things I really like about Warbirds is when you make a low pass with them at speed. They just have a look that doesn't come from any other kind of airplane. Rolls with the Zero certainly aren't axial. But just a little bump on a down elevator when it's inverted can keep a roll pretty straight. Here I forced it into a full on stall and it just falls through and doesn't do anything weird. Give it some power and a little bit of elevator and it comes right out of it. You do need a little space but it comes out of it pretty quick. And every time I found something about the Zero's handling that I liked I got a little braver. Besides, we have a Warbird meet at our field next weekend, and I gotta shake this thing out and get ready for that. One of the things I found about this Zero is that when you pull it up into a turn, a little bit of rudder added to it makes it look a little better as it goes through the turn. This is landing number two, and it's a lot better than the first one, but I still let the nose get a little too low on the rollout and then prop touch the tall grass. So if you're looking for a giant scale Warbird, the ESM-0 at 88 inches has my blessings. There's a couple of truly dumb things in the instructions, but it's nothing we can overcome. And we showed you that in the build series. So if you're looking for a Warbird, you need to take a look at the ESM-0. And if you just got a bunch of lead you need to get rid of, the ESM-0 can help you with that too.